Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be drawing a Newman projections for this particular question here and ask to draw all Newman projections of two four dimethyl hexane while looking through carbon 3 and carbon 4. So that's a typical way of asking question. They will tell you which particular carbons you're going to be looking through. So before you do anything, you want to actually make sure you can draw this structure. So it's a hexane, so you're going to have six carbons obviously in the chain here. So I'm going to go ahead and draw out the parent chain first. So it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then there's going to be 6 here. And then if I just number those roughly from the left side, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, and I know there is a methyl group on the 4 one, so it's this right there, and there's a methyl group on the 5th, on the 4th one. There's a methyl group on the 2nd one, and there's a methyl group on the 4th one. Um, so then I'm looking through the bond C3 and C4. So this is going to be our bond here, and I know since we our eye is going to be right there, we're looking at the carbon 3 first. So this is going to be your front carbon, and then your carbon 4 is going to be the back carbon. Okay, so let's try to draw that, that out. So your front carbon is going to be the center, so I'll draw that with the little dot there. And your back carbon is going to be the circle. So let me just draw that like this. And then figure out what's connected to the back carbon, what's connected to the front carbon. And I can clearly see on the back carbon, which is going to be your carbon 4 here. So let me just go ahead and uh, call this 4 here. And uh, call this 3 here. On 4, I know I got this methyl group on the top and I got this ethyl group. And your third substituent or third uh, bond here is going to be coming off the hydrogen there. So I got, so I have a ethyl group attached to it. So instead of writing, at, um, instead of drawing the bonds, I can go ahead and write down ET there. And then I'm going to have the methyl coming out here. So I'm just going to go ahead and write down ME. And then the last one is going to be your hydrogen there. So that's going to be your back carbon. So remember, I'm going to be rotating my front carbon. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy some of these down. So I don't have to redraw those again and again. Okay, so now I'm drawing, gonna be drawing my back carbon. So when I'm drawing the back carbon, now I'm gonna be drawing the front carbon. So when I'm drawing the front carbon, I got this isopropyl group there and I got two hydrogens. So I can initially put it anywhere, it doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it an isopropyl group there. So I'll probably just write down IPR there. That's just an abbreviation for isopropyl group. And then I'm gonna have two hydrogens there, hydrogen there and I'm going to have another hydrogen there. And now we're going to be rotating those 60 degrees at a time. So I'm going to be rotating the front carbon clockwise. So your back carbon stays the same. So your so this green substituent stays as it is. So when you rotate this by 60 degrees, your IPR or your isopropyl group is going to be on the top of that methyl group. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, draw that out now. So it's going to be right here. So IPR there, and then you're going to have the hydrogen right here, and then you're going to have the other hydrogen right here. And uh, we'll just keep doing it, so it's probably going to be a good idea if you can pause the session and uh, draw all these on your own, and then we'll figure out uh, the energies in, in a bit. So I got... Uh, then the next one, your IPR is going to be right there, or your isopropyl group is right there, your hydrogen is going to be right there, and then your other hydrogen is going to be right there. So we'll just keep going. And now your isopropyl group is going to be eclipsed with respect to the hydrogen there. And then your other hydrogen groups on that center carbon or the front carbon are going to be eclipsed with respect to the methyl. 
and the apple. So then just keep going. Get a next one here that's going to be 60 degrees again. Um, we get isopropyl grip right here. And then we got the hydrogen right here and the hydrogen on the bottom as well. And we'll just keep doing it. 60 degrees. And then we're going to have the isopropyl grip eclipse with respect to the apple grip. And then we got the uh, hydrogen eclipse with respect to the metal grip here. And then we get another third hydrogen eclipse to the other hydrogen there. So those are going to be your six confirmations there. And I can probably call these guys as A, B, C, D, E, and F. Usually the question is going to be to be able to identify what's going to be your most stable confirmation and what's going to be your least stable confirmation and figure out if there is any degenerate confirmations. So remember, your, whenever your dihedral angle is 60, then you're kind of looking at to be your uh, staggered confirmation. So your uh, figure out which ones are going to be your staggered confirmation. So remember this uh, A right there, and then we got C right there, and then we got this E right there. Those are going to be your staggered confirmation. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down here. So we got A, we got C, we got E. Those are going to be your staggered confirmations. And the next question you want to ask yourself, in those staggered confirmations, do they have the same energy, all of them? Well, let's figure that out. So we got uh, focus on your Gauss interactions there and focus on which particular one going to have a, um, anti confirmation if there is any. So we have a Gauss interactions right there with the isopropyl and the ethyl group. We got Gauss interactions with the isopropyl grip and the methyl grip there. So you have two Gauss interactions in case of A. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down here. So that's going to be your two Gauss interactions. So I'll just write down GI for that. And then when we focus on this C here, the only Gauss interaction I'm going to have in case of C is going to be between the isopropyl and the methyl there. So one. So there's going to be only one Gauss interactions there. And then moving along, when I'm looking at E, what's going on there, we're going to have, um, again, one Gauss interactions between the ethyl and isopropyl group. Now the question is, obviously your two Gauss interactions are going to be bad compared to one. So I know your A is going to be less stable than the C and the E. Now between C and E, which one is going to be the most stable? Uh, well, when we're looking at the Gauss interactions, in case of uh, E, the Gauss interactions are going to be between the isopropyl and the ethyl group. So those are relatively bigger group. But when I'm looking at, in case of C, the Gauss interactions are going to be between the isopropyl and the methyl group. So this is methyl group is actually smaller than the ethyl group. So as a result, you're going to have a smaller Gauss interactions in case of C. So out of those three Gauss interaction Gauss confirmations that we just got, we can say your C is actually going to be the most stable. Most stable Gauss confirmation. And then among those three, between A and E, I can say A has two Gauss interactions. So your A is going to be the least stable Gauss confirmation. All right, so we haven't really gotten into the eclipse form yet. So now let's focus on the eclipse. So we don't really have any degenerate confirmations so far because they all have different uh, energies. And when I'm looking at uh, B, D and F, so those are going to be, so let me change the color there, so B, D, and F, those are going to be your eclipse, so I'm going to go ahead and write that down there, so we got uh, B, D, and F, so those are eclipse, 
So even in among those eclipse confirmations, you may not have all of them at the same energy level. So that's something we need to check on now. So let's focus on what's going on. So we got, uh, um, let me change the color there. So we got uh, an hydrogen atoll here. We got uh, isopropyl methyl here. And then we got an hydrogen hydrogen there. So in case of B, we got two big interactions and, when, and we got one hydrogen hydrogen uh, uh, torsional strain there. So then when we're looking at, in case of D, we're kind of in a very similar scenario where you know, you've got an isopropyl with a hydrogen, a methyl with a hydrogen, and a an hydrogen with an ethyl group. But when we look at this F, your F is going to be the worst one, and that's because your biggest two groups on those two carbons, the front and back, the front one is going to have the isopropyl, and the back one has the ethyl. They are going to be at a dihedral angle of zero, or another way of saying they are going to be having the maximum torsional strain there, and uh, also uh, maximum steric hindrance there or steric interactions there. So as a result, among those three eclipse confirmations, your F is actually going to be the most unstable or going to be the least stable. So I'm just going to go ahead and write that down. So your F is going to be the least stable. And the other way of saying least stable is most energetic. All right, and then your uh, other ones, your B and D are going to be in between. So if I want to go ahead and figure out what's going to be the stability order of all of those. So I know so far your C is going to be the most stable Gauche confirmation. So C is going to be the most stable. And then among the other Gauche confirmations that we got here, that's going to be the A and the E. We said A is going to be the least stable because it has two Gauche interactions. All right, so after C, we're going to have E. After E, we're going to have the A. That's going to be your least stable Gauche confirmation. And then you move on to the eclipse confirmation. So among the eclipse confirmations, I know your F is going to be the least stable. But between B and D, which one is going to be more stable? Well, if I focus on here, I know in case of B, I have two big groups, isopropyl. I got isopropyl and methyl. They are eclipsed to one another. But when I'm looking at your D, you don't really have two big groups kind of eclipsed to one another. We're going to have hydrogen, at least in, in every single case there, uh, to be eclipsed with a bigger group. So since we have two these two big groups eclipsed to one another, that's going to be less stable. As a result, we can say your D is going to be more stable. So when I'm putting them in the order, after your Gauche confirmation, D is going to be more stable. And then after that, it's going to be B. And then finally, the least stable or the most energetic is going to be your F. So a typical question is going to be involving be able to draw all the confirmations, be able to predict the Gauche interactions, and then be able to predict your most stable confirmation and your least stable confirmations. Hopefully this was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to leave any comments in the section below.